Welcome back subscribers and welcome new viewers to July 2024 general monthly reading for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, North or South Nodes of the Moon. And I want to thank each and every one of you who have subscribed, who like and share my videos because that helps my whole channel to circulate to more and more individuals who are needing this information just like you. Okay, Capricorn, let me quickly go through the transiting planets. So today I am taping on July 3rd, 2024, and the new moon is going to be on the 5th. So just in a couple of days, we're already in that energy, and it's the energy of Cancer, 14 degrees, 23 minutes. We also have Venus in Cancer through the 11th. So both of those energies together are conjunct right now. We still have a transiting a Chiron in Aries and it will be 23 degrees all month long. We also still have North Node in Aries. It is retrograde. It begins the month at 11 degrees and by the end of the month, 8 degrees. The full moon is going to be on the 21st. It's going to be in Capricorn and your sign, Capricorn. There we go. So conjunct you whatever planets you have in Capricorn. And it's, uh, it's going to be 29 degrees, so right at the end of Capricorn, right before transitioning into Aquarius. Okay, so we still have Saturn in Pisces. It's retrograde all month long, and it begins the month at 19 degrees. By the end of the month, 18 degrees. We also still, of course, have Neptune in Pisces at 29 degrees and will remain so all month long. Also, Pluto, of course, is still in Aquarius because it just began and it is retrograde right now. So it begins the month at one degree and then by the end of the month, zero degrees. Okay, so the big one or the big couple of planets that we want to watch out for is, and watching out for it now through the 20th. First is Mars is in Taurus right now through the 20th. And with that being said, it is conjunct to Uranus in Taurus and it's a fairly close conjunction degree wise. So by degree, degree wise. By degree. So what that says to me is Taurus has to do with one's values, what we value individually and or as, as a group, at a humanity at large, the earth, because these are general transits, so it's affecting everyone, generally speaking. And then depending on what your specific natal wheel and how your planets are aligned will depend upon how it is um, specifically affecting you. Okay, so again, generally Mars, okay, so Taurus is our values um, having to do with self-worth, what we see and feel worthy of, and Oh, let's see. And that again can be the whole collective as well. And it being in Mar or Mars being in Taurus, Mars is that action planet. So Mars takes action very passionately and can be even very explosively uh, passionately done. Um, so emotionally expressive physically, emotionally expressive about what is valued, etc. What I just talked about, Taurus. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, Uranus, again, means quick, surprising, unexpected changes. That's also in Taurus. So it's still about our values. It's still about how we feel about ourselves and um, the value system that we have all been under. And also, uh, yeah, any good or bad or 
the truth about how that this value system that we've all have been living under and in how that really is working, how it has worked and um, any changes that are desiring to be made are going to be expressed now. And again, with Uranus, it, it, it can be very done very quickly and surprisingly. So quick, surprising changes that we don't expect. And so we will see that in maybe in the news, um, in, in the outer world and in people in general taking action and speaking about what they value and, and desire to, to value as well is also what I'm getting. Okay, so that's through the 20th. Now we also have something else. Mars on the 21st transitions from Taurus into Gemini. And so when Mars does that, then it's going to be conjunct to Jupiter in Gemini. And Jupiter expands the characteristics of whatever planet it is uh, next to. And so now we're talking Mars. And them both being in Gemini, Gemini is the natural house of the third house, which is communication. Verbal, nonverbal, all kinds of communication. Messages coming in, being given. And in this case, with Mars, Mars is going to be shouting communications very over even more passionate than with Uranus being conjunct to Uranus. So Uranus would make them unexpected surprising, uh, voicing out, passionate voicing out. Now, the second half of the month, it's going to be really over the top. It's the expression of Mars and people expressing this Mars energy is going to be very extreme, extreme, extremely passionate, whether it's extremely excited, extremely angry, whatever that might be, depending on what is, uh, what's being said or desired to, to be, um, the truth to be told, what truth to be told, how. Okay. With that being said, let's get to your reading Capricorn. So that's it. So let's see what Capricorn, what you have to look forward to this month of July. Okay. I'll take that one. Let's get that right there. And we're finding out first Capricorn, what energies are assisting you on your path and with whatever is going on for you your general sign for July. Okay, is there any more of these cards, these sacred geometry cards for Capricorn? Sun, moon, rising, north or south nodes of the moon for Capricorn. For Whoa, okay. Alrighty. Okay, so this one was the one that wants to come out first. Intimacy. Okay, this is the strongest energy for you is intimacy this month and it's number 26 that breaks down into an eight the energy of intimacy supports us trusting that we are safe to allow closeness capricorns does that ring a bell for you i'm getting the strong feeling that right away at least for some of you this is ringing true so maybe this is what you've been struggling with. You've been questioning, uh, maybe second guessing yourself, not trusting your um, experiences or your intuition about what, whatever type of intimacy this is talking about for you. But now you can, you can know this is a confirmation that it is safe. So. So those of you that are questioning or wondering if this uh, new intimate partner or friendship, maybe it's a new family member for some of you I'm getting, or even a business partner, 
is possible. Um, can you allow this closeness? Can you trust this person? Well, what this card is saying to me, and it, if this rings true for you, or if this, this definitely could be a confirmation for you because you feel that, but this could be a confirmation to your feelings and to your intuitive, what you're getting intuitively and what you've experienced so far. So yes, yes, you can trust this intimate relationship. Now, for others of you, maybe this new new um, relationship again, whatever type of intimate relationship it is, maybe you don't have it yet. Maybe it's coming this month for you. I just got um, 25, so I don't know if that means the 25th of, of July for some of you. 25th, okay, full moon's on the 21st. Yeah, I just got 25, so I don't know, 25 could be significant just the number 25 for someone, and that could be a confirmation. I'm not getting anything more other than it could possibly mean the date of July 25th. And maybe I also just got, uh, this is very specific. Again, this is not everyone. This is for someone. You're a Leo, and you are born on the 25th of July. Okay. That would be a confirmation for you that... Yes, you're at the right place. You're listening to the right reading right now. There's something here for you. Okay. Okay, next up is number 41, and that breaks down into a five. Time. And I just got time is changing. And I also got another message. It's time for change. Capricorn, it's time for change. The energy of time supports our understanding of the relativity of time and our capacity to be present in the moment. So what I just got, a, a, a message for someone, or maybe some of you, this time, maybe it has to, it's time to take time out to enjoy yourself. Do something that you love to do. Do something that makes you happy and joyful. Okay, there's time. Okay, I don't know if I held this one up long enough. Intimacy. For those of you that want to pause the video, because this does have sacred geometry, these cards, so that you can, if you're needing to assist your, assist this frequency to flow through you, to flow um, abundantly this month for you, then certainly can do that. Oh, transparency. And this is number 43 that breaks down into a seven. And transparency says the energy of transparency supports our expansion toward a higher vibrational state of being with more insight, honesty, and clarity. So yes, so I'm getting a couple of things here. You're requiring transparency. And also, you are being required to also be transparent with others. Specifically, this new intimate relationship, for those of you this rings true for, which it's somehow going to ring true for a lot of you because this is in the general reading, the, your energy, this intimacy energy. So again, it doesn't have to be romantic. It can be romantic, friendship, business, and even maybe a new family member that you had never met before and they're coming into your life is what I'm getting for someone or some of you. And so this transparency, you are going to expect transparency, but also in re expecting transparency, you must also give that same transparency in this new relationship. And I'm also getting, in order for this new intimate relationship to truly be intimate and take you to another vibrational, higher vibrational state of being, transparency, that's what it's taking you. So this is going to be a new type of relationship. For some of you, it's going to be transparency is, is a new thing for you. And honest, truthful, 100%. That's to me what transparency means. 
um, that you are showing openly who you truly are and vice versa, they are too. So this, this could definitely be a new type of relationship that you have, um, because of the past work you have done, now you're ready for something like this. You are stepping up in your vibrational level or you have, and so that's why you are also attracting to you that higher vibrational person so that you can experience this new type of new expansive deepening intimacy than you have before and and them too okay that's beautiful that's beautiful capricorn okay so let's see i'm getting maybe let's see from these cards how you worked your way up this ladder of where you are right now and being ready for this type of intimate relationship to experience this new type of intimacy that maybe you consciously know or or unconsciously you don't you either consciously or unconsciously know this you might not consciously feel ready but you are you are and definitely coming in to your environment to into your space that that's just proof so yes okay so let's see for capricorn sun moon rising what else what what have they done what types of experiences what have they worked through or whatever other details that Capricorns need to know for this month. Okay. The ten, oh, ten of chalices. Okay. Ten of cups. Look at that. Well, you've absolutely done some type of huge emotional healing and working through to receive this ten of cups because this is what you're ready for now. Again, this is just confirming to me this new type of intimacy that I'm talking about. You're going to love it. You are going to love it. Um, you're going to be in emotional bliss. Emotional bliss. And again, it's a new, it's a new beginning for you. It's a new experience. Brand new experience. So you've learned... You've learned from past relationships and it's going to be different for all of you. So you've learned whatever you've learned up to this point to be able to now um, be introduced to something, a new aspect, a new advancement into intimacy. Okay, so this is the Knight of Swords. Yeah, um, okay, so what I'm getting with the Knight of Swords here is that, yeah, you've done a lot of um, redirecting your thoughts um, and your mind to get out those blockages that were previously there having to do with intimate relationships and intimacy. And maybe you had a fear of intimacy and you had to work through certain experiences. And again, if you, if you've never looked at your natal wheel and maybe some of you have, it's right there. So that would be in your Chiron. Chiron is called the wounded healer because those are definitely going to be experiences that each one of us, depending on the sign and the house placement that it's in, in your natal wheel will depend upon the types of uh, traumatic experiences that you are going to have in order for you to have the chance to heal. And, and if that's true, again, I'm seeing Chiron for you. You've been healing your Chiron. It could also have to do with your South node. Maybe you have your South node in the seventh or eighth house. Those are both partnership houses and having to do with, um, different types of intimacy. Also, you could have your south node in the first house or the second house. 
because that would be the north node would be in the seventh and eighth, or eighth house. Okay, so what else? And I'm getting too that a lot of you had to do this solo. I just was drawn, I know that this is the Knight of Swords, but I just saw him, he's alone on his horse. And that's what came to me is definitely those words that you've been on a solo journey. You've been having to um, work through those emotional traumas, those blockages of yours, having to do with intimacy, um, emotional closeness. Yes. Of some sort. But again, you're ready now. And if you're not ready right at the moment of you listening to this, you're almost there and you will be by the end of July and you will see, you will see a shift. You will feel a shift and you will know a shift has happened if it hasn't already. Okay. So is there anything else that Capricorn needs? Oh, okay. Yeah, King of Pentacles. And what I'm getting from this King of Pentacles is this is you. And you are sitting, if you're not right at this moment, again, some of you are. This is a general reading. Some of you might not be. You're almost there. But what I'm seeing is you're. this is where you're headed, is this energy, the Ten of Chalices, because this is with another, and then this has to do within your own self, which also calls in this Ten of Cups person. Um, but for me, the King of Cups is, excuse me, King of Pentacles for you, is saying that you, you, okay, you know your worth. I just got that um, came in. But also I want to say that you are abundant, you are abundant within yourself. You know your soul's abundance. You are peaceful with who you are and fully, 100%, completely transparent and open um, with showing and just being you, 100% you. You're at peace. You're thankful. You, um, you can even be gaining physical, um, just recently, or it's starting this month to, to gain that abundance showing in your physical world. That's what I want to say, whether that's money, whether that is property. I got somebody's, somebody could be receiving a piece of property or having enough money to put a down payment on a piece of property. Um, that was a dream of yours. And now you are able to do that or you're going to be able to do that. Something's coming to fruition abundance wise for you that you have been desiring and you've been working towards. And this is, this is, this is a side note from this intimacy, unless it's a business partnership, intimate business partnership, then they could be both coming at the same time simultaneously and I'm getting some of you could even it could be a romantic relationship and a perfect business relationship both both of these together so some of you this is you this is this is your energy the king of pentacles and then you will be in the Ten of Cups when you're with in that intimate relationship, new relationship. Okay. Okay, so let's see. What else? Or Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, North or South Nodes of the Moon.
Okay, so let's see for Capricorn. What? There we go. Okay. Okay, so we have number 25. Number 25 is showing up again. And I said something's important about number 25, at least for some of you. That's not necessarily all of you. It could be different for you, too, than number 25. But anyway, okay, so, and that breaks down into a 7. So 7 could be important, too, for some of you. Protect what you love. It is your duty and responsibility. That this, I am strongly getting this is a message, a specific message for someone or for some of you. It's not for all of you. Let me, I'm going to read it one more time. Protect what you love. It is your duty and responsibility. Okay, let me see here. I feel like there's, that this is complete. This reading is complete. So I'm going to stop right here, Capricorn. And I want to thank you for allowing me to read for you this month of July. And I hope this was helpful. Until next time. Bye.